And he talks about his name being a provider, a protector. You and I get the glory and the wonder of who God is. So let's go before him in prayer. God, we're not worthy. God, I'm not worthy of all the grace and mercy and forgiveness and love that you have shown each and every one of us. But here we are, God, coming before you, wanting to learn more about you. So God, forgive us. God, move me out the way. This is all about you and your people and the glorious wonders that you have waiting for us once Christ comes back. God, we can't wait for that day. Until then, God, let the Holy Spirit lead and guide us. Let him lift us up and get closer to you. And God, let us always remember that you are our Savior. And God, you are awesome. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, saints, we're actually going to our theme verses. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Would you turn to that passage and stand for the reading of his most holy word? Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. When you have it, if you can say amen. Amen. And the word of God, it reads this way from the New American Standard Version. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to follow all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. You may be seated. Now, I'm going to tell you, this message is not like any other message that I have brought to you. I'm going to need you to get your pens ready because we have several passages that I'm going to refer to. All right. And I won't be able to develop them all, but you will definitely get the point. The title of this sermon is, It's My Responsibility. It's My Responsibility. And I have two points to give to you. The first is the what of my responsibility. The what of my responsibility. And the second is the how of my responsibility. We've been in this discussion all day today about how you and I are called to inject ourselves. I guess if I want to be biblically correct, it says to come alongside. But we have to inject ourselves into this dark world and to influence it. Mm -hmm. hmm. No one is really telling us the truth about how we are to live this life. But we get a lot of advice from the world. And we as believers believe the world more than what we believe in God. See, we're told not to mix politics with religion. We're told that we need to stay in our place. Which they, you know, the people of the world, have set aside for us. We can exist but we got to exist in our own little bubble. And if you and I are in that bubble, we cannot affect anyone but each other. All right. If we stay in our bubble and we don't share Christ the way God has called us to share it, the world is doomed. Because the world tells us, and sometimes they're right about this, we don't even love like the Bible tells us to love. Hmm. We are told that the truth is the truth, but the truth is the truth that they make up. All right. Not the truth that's in the Bible. And you and I need to understand 
saying that although we're in the kingdom of God, our minds are still at risk. See, God tries to tell us that we need to look at things from a godly perspective. We need to have godly insight, and it needs to come from a godly understanding. None of that we get from the world. And it's irritating to me to hear a particular group of pastors, of evangelists that get up in the pulpit and they spread the lies of the world like it's from God. Their advice is tainted because they go off of what the world has to say and what they want to happen as opposed to what's in the world of God. All right. If you don't believe me, just go up and down the street and see all the different monuments that are erected in the name of a God. Oh God. But they don't know the God. Mm. And to be honest, saints, some of us don't know him either. Mm. We're so familiar and comfortable with the society that we have grabbed a little bit of God and then joined society as into how we go about what we do. All right. And the question comes, are we really standing for God? See, even inside of the kingdom of God, we have different sects of evangelicals that tell us this is the way that it is when really they hide behind their own fears. The truth is, the reason why the black church and other minority churches are here is because our white brothers and sisters didn't want us worshiping with them. And they sit from their kingdom, that's not God's kingdom, and tell us how we're supposed to think and feel when the word of God doesn't agree with it. And here's what's sad about it. Even in the minority churches, we teach lies. There's a good reason sometimes why the separation is there, but not when it's against the word of God. All right. You want truth? The truth is God doesn't see color. Amen. So if we don't get past that first step, are we really children of God? If we're basing people on their religion, their race, as opposed to the makeup and the creation of who God is, you and I are in trouble. All right. Because what we're doing is we're conforming to the ills of this world, and God cannot use that. <laughs> we get mad when the songs we play are not of our ethnicity. And we can't even enjoy the pureness of the word that gets us into worship. Oh, God. See, if you're really talking about honoring God, you got to turn to Galatians 5, 22 and 23, when it talks about the fruit of the spirit. When we walk like God, we will look like this. All right. Galatians 5, 22 and 23, it says, right. but the fruit of the spirit is love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. All right. But we got to read one more. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus crucify the flesh with his passions and desires. See, so saints, if we're being honest, you and I are broken. We've been damaged by the very society that we live in, and it's all because of what happened back with Adam and Eve. All right. And that evilness has just grown and it's spread. And the problem is, when we stand in these pulpits, we can't distinguish the world from God. All right. And our minds, they stay, it stays at risk. And God says it's at risk because we won't change to Him. See, what we do is an expression of what we believe. All right. So if you want to know if you love God or not, where are you walking? <laughs> How are you talking? Hallelujah. What's your conversation? Yeah. Who are your associations? Yeah. If we really think about it and we take time for just a moment and we think about what impairs us, 
What keeps us out of a relationship in God and others is us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Personally. We have severed and we keep that severed relationship from God because we won't totally submit to his will. All right. We tell God, I'm going to take two steps for you, for, uh, towards you, and then I'm going to stop. All right. That's the best that I'm going to serve you today. Matter of fact, today I'm going to take two steps back. We're damaged. We're damaged and we need to understand it's our reasoning, our thinking, and our understanding that keeps us from bonding with God the way that God wants to bond with us. And the only way we get to truth is when we bond with God. See, being associated with God is not good enough. We must do the truth that he's teaching us. See, the depths of our deception of the sin that we have to deal with is immeasurable. Mm. Once you think you have something conquered, it comes to us at a different level. All right. And you and I need to understand that sin affects the very fiber of our being. The very essence of our soul has been affected by this darkness. Right. And God has said, I've set you free, but you got to come to me yeah. in order to be free. Oh, yeah. And we won't go all the way. And some of us, it's our own fault. We allow people to teach us the word of God that's not actually giving us the word of God. Yeah. We develop our own kingdom of life, mm -hmm. but it's not the light of God. And God warns us. Here it comes. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. This is the problem that we have that Paul is trying to point out to the Roman believers about the positioning of their mind. It talks about the way we need to be a holy sacrifice, but we have to renew our minds in order to get there. All Watch right. out, some of us. All right. This is about to burn. <laughs> You call other people racist when you're racist yourself. You don't reach out your hand to someone that looks different from you. You have to associate with only with those that look just like you. And God says, if you stay in me and you renew your mind, I'm going to open up something great and good for you. Because we got to remember the scene in Revelation when it tells us from every nation the believers will come from. What nation are you building right now? Who's in your circle of influence? How many people have you talked to that don't look like you, act like you, think like you? Have you broadened your horizons with how God has blessed you? And I'm telling you, saints, the issue is inside the church. All right. It's not from the way God teaches us, and he even lets us know there are different types of bodies that are out there. Mm -hmm. And not all of them represent God in the right way. You don't believe me? Look at Revelation chapter 2. Look at the different churches. There's only a couple of them that actually look like God. But I want to point you to Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 through 20. And it's the church of Thyria. Hmm. And I want to point to a word inside of that those passages, tolerate. And that word means you are superior, but you allow yourself to be moved to an inferior position. See, at one time they loved the Lord, and the Lord was number one. But they allowed influences to come in and shift their position from a, from a superior one to an inferior one. Why? Because they lost their way with God. Hmm. See, the world tells us that we're not any good. If you don't chase after things for yourself, there's nothing that you can do. But God's word tells us that we are the light and the salt, which means we have a purpose. Yes, but we yes. keep allowing the world to come in. And we even let the false prophets tell us 
when we think we have this association with the Lord, but we don't. Hmm. See, those churches in Revelation, most of them have an issue with following God. But the love of God comes through as Christ is explaining what's wrong with each church. And a couple get a pat on their back. But if you step out of Revelation and you back up a little bit to 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, 8 through 12. 2 Thessalonians 2, 8 through 12. This passage, you have to read carefully because what he's talking about is influences that are inside of the church that are teaching those that are inside the church the wrong things about God. And Paul puts it in a way to let you know that what you're being taught is those ways of Satan. And he's so slick about how Satan is slick about how he does it is he makes you think that you're right. All right. You know, that's things like black power. Mm -hmm. You in the church of love, but we want black power. <laughs> or how about being a member of the KKK? All right. you, you make your association, I'm with God, but yet I hold these, these associations with the world and I try to blend them together. There should be no black power. There should be no white power. There should be no white supremacy. Right. The issue is, are you really representing God in his position? All right. Ooh, Lord, I'm trying to set this up for you. Help me get there. Help me get there. Hmm. As we look at verses 11 and 12 of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, it tells us, for this reason, God will send upon them a, a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false. See, if you operate in the house of God and you keep taking on the falsehoods that you're being taught, God says, okay, if that's what you're going to do, I'm going to send an influencing spirit. So what is true, you're going to believe is false. Mm. And you say, well, pastor, prove that to me today. We just got to go to some of the churches. You know where they, they cry out for the death of a baby, but then they don't say nothing when you see a black man being shot and killed. Mm. When children are being sex trafficking, you don't see them in their church standing behind what the ills of this world are. Oh, they instead want a man that is riddled with morality issues that deals with the ills of this world like he is a back playground and we bring that stuff in and we accept it as being the truth. That doesn't line up with the word of God. Amen. And I'm not saying that the other opponent is any better. All right. But as believers, we're supposed to come beside them and influence them if they show themselves influenceable. All right. Even if they're dull in the mind, we're still supposed to come alongside and give some truth. But we cannot ignore what they show us. Oh, Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Pastor, when are we going to get to our past? Our, 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 our scripture, I promise you, I'm in it already. You just don't see it yet. All right. Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And I'm, I'm going to stick with the first verse, but we need all of it to really understand the situation that Paul is bringing out here. He says, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Mm. Y'all, this is, this is problematic because he's speaking to the church and he's saying, read on. I was with you and I gave you the truth of the gospel of Christ. All right. And yet you look like some stranger. You're not a part of being his bride. You are something else. All right. Did you suffer so many things in vain? They were suffering for the right thing and then they got off track. They lost Jesus, although they were singing his praises. All right. Mark chapter 13, verses 3 through 5. 
I'm sorry, Mark 13, verses 5 through 7, 5 through 7. The verse 5 is what I want to focus in on. It says, and Jesus began to say to them, see it that no one misleads you. Many will come in my name saying, I am he, and will mislead many. You will hear of wars and rumors of war. Do not be frightened. These things must take place, but that is not yet the end. If we stay focused in verse 5, it says, see that no one misleads you. And then he points very specifically to those that are in his pulpit. Okay. I, I want you to understand that, that he's letting you know that those that are sharing his word, they're going to say they're coming in Christ's name, but they're not. And you're saying, well, pastor, how do I know the difference? And I said, I already shared it with you. If you go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, right. they need to be sharing some fruit like that. Mm. Yeah. But when they share fruit from verses 19 to 21, we need to be paying attention to that. If they tell us they follow God and they're spreading hate, they can't follow God because remember, God says these two, two things don't exist simultaneously in his kingdom. There's only one side that is in his kingdom. All right. So if you're looking for characteristics of what you're supposed to follow, look at the fruit. But I'm even going to take you to another passage. All right. Philippians 4 and 8. <laughs> if you ever question whether you're following the right type of leader, let's see if we follow what Paul says here. All right. He says, finally, brethren, whatever is true, yeah. not a lie that they dress up like the truth, All right. not where they take numbers and statistics or they, they tell you don't believe your lying eyes, <laughs> even though you witnessed it, whatever is true yeah. is true. Right. Whatever is honorable, Whatever is right, whether it's whatever is love, whatever is good or repute, these are what we're following. Yes. These are what we should be following. And Paul is trying to get us to walk with the right spirit. See, right now, we look into God's word and we say, well, I can do that, I can do that, and I can do that. <laughs> oh, that? Loving my enemy? I can't, I can't do that. That takes too much work. <laughs> Let somebody slap me on my cheek and turn to me, I can't do that. that. That invades my manhood. So we go through the word of God, his counsel, and we say, I'm going to do A, B, C, D, E, F, I ain't touching. The problem with that is you don't have the full counsel of God. All right. And you are a lie. Mm. I don't care what pulpit is telling you anything. If you don't follow his full counsel, you're not in the will of God. Right. You cannot pick and choose what you're going to do and not going to do. Okay. You don't believe me. Acts chapter 20, verse 27. <laughs> Acts chapter 20, verse 27. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose, or that word can come out as counsel of God. Mm. We need that whole counsel right. of God for us to operate. But see, we're so affected and damaged and broken by the world, we have weaved ourselves into a corner. Because we say, I'll do this for the Lord, but I won't do that. I'll do this for the Lord. And we think it's acceptable. Ooh. It's not. The evidence of the truth is accepted of the whole gospel, yeah. not your convenience of it. Yeah. See, that's that strange gospel that Paul talks about. There is a blindness that we have to the full gospel because we only want to accept parts of it. And then we call ourselves representatives of Christ. My Lord. 
the what of the responsibilities. Verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. See, when we look at the what, we got to really understand what the what is. All right. The what is the power of God. And God, in verse 18, Jesus gets his power from God the Father. It's an authority that has been passed on for Jesus now to have the power. And as we come into 19, Jesus is taking that power and he's giving it to all his disciples that follow him. All right. Thank you, Lord. And see, you and I, we get caught up in the mega churches. <laughs> we get caught up in the mega churches not knowing what they really follow and what they really do. Well, we need to understand that from the mega church to the small church, if they don't base what they do in God, there is the problem. Mm. Mm. See, this power that God is passing on is the purest saving power that there is. Yeah. It's the only thing that can take us out of the realm of darkness and bring us into the realm of light. All right. And you say, well, what does that have to do with anything? Because we're allowing our power. You know, I was talking about that position of superiority to inferiority. That's what you and I are doing. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're accepting things that are not of God just for our convenience. Mm -hmm. Just because I can be with like people and I can be in God and happy at the same time. Mm -hmm. Notice I didn't say joyful. Joyful has a relationship with God. Yeah. It tells us what, no matter what we go through, come on, somebody help yes. me. We can have joy because we know God is behind it. Yeah. But we, we partner up with the world because of our color, because of our common interest. All right. And we say that's of God when it's not. Okay. See, in this passage, it's about authority also. Jesus passed on the authority to his disciples for his disciples to go and make disciples. I know. Maybe, maybe if I, I try an example, you could, you could uh, get with what I'm talking about here. Now, I'm, I'm assuming everybody can drive in here, right? But before you could drive, you had to go to the state of California and go take a test, right? And that test verifies that you have the information for you to be able to get behind the wheel to drive. All right. Now, the state of California has the authority to give out authority for people to drive. All right. So if we do what we're supposed to do and we pass the test and pay some money, you can now have the right or the authority to drive on the streets inside of the state of California. All right. But if you don't pass, uh -huh. you don't have the authority. That's right. So God put us to the test. He gave us his grace and mercy. Yeah. He forgave us of our sins. Now he's looking to see if we pass the test. All right. <sighs> see, the power was passed on. The question is not if we don't have the power. We have the power. The question is, are you displaying the power? The problem is you look at power the way the world looks at power. And you don't understand that the true power lies in like these white and these yellow and these red balls. They represent the gospel going out. Right. The gospel being shared and accepted and then them committing their lives to God. Yes. See, in Jeremiah 10 and 23, it says, I know, O Lord, a, that a man's way is not himself, nor is a man who walks uh, to direct his steps. The power is not in the man, it's in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Maybe this will make it a lot plainer to you what I'm trying to tell you. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? 
1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Who is in you, whom you have from God, that you are not your own? For you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. See, our problem, saints, and this is to a troubled church. The church of Corinth was troubled, and they were bringing in their own stuff into God's house. And they were, they were making it grow inside of that community. And Paul came there and he wanted to clean it up. He wanted all the churches of God to be the same. Hmm. And he tells them, you're not your own. Christ bought you with a price. Oh, no. You're supposed to be out there loving on others. Hmm. But in this church, I find a son with his father's wife. Yes. Yeah. In this church, I see you praising men instead of praising Christ. All right. In church, I'm finding you getting into these cliques and warring with each other. Uh -huh. Come on, y'all. All right. See, in our westernized world, we're mixing God's purpose with our own purpose. And we won't see that God tells us that we're supposed to go therefore. Mm. Mm. And he tells us the power is in what we do, which is making disciples. Oh God. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. Look, see, God says it. God tells us in Matthew 20 and 28. I told y'all to get your pens ready. Matthew 20 and 28, he says, just that the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to be served, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And we're supposed to be emulating Christ, right? All right. We're supposed to be serving others. Yes. See, that make disciples, that make means a particular way. All There's right. a particular way we're to make disciples, and those disciples are supposed to be made in the image of Christ. That's right. Amen. Oh, God. <laughs> See, if we really look at verse 19, back in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 um, Jesus first is the one that has the power that's the how and how he pushes his power out to his disciples is for them to go and make disciples All right. that's the how right but because of that authority his followers go in confidence in serving the Lord. God has empowered you and I to go and find those. That means we got to go alongside them in order to see what they're dealing with and have a conversation about this glorious gospel about Jesus Christ. All right. The reason why he came from heaven to earth, took on our sins, went to the cross, died and was raised on the third day is for his power to be transferred to us, to give us power to go and to bring all of those that are to be in the kingdom forever. And I'm so tired of the lies of these evangelicals, these churches that are telling you and I that we need to accept things that are not godly. We're told we're not supposed that we could be okay with abortion. We're supposed to be okay with that. But then we're supposed to be okay with accepting someone who's been sued more than 4,000 times. That has an issue with his morality. Cheated on the first wife, cheated on the second wife, cheated on the third wife, and all his associates are going to jail. And he has numerable court cases against him and the Christian believers are behind him and they say, well, no matter what all he's done, he's okay to be our president. Right. Pastor, watch out. You missed in, you're mixing politics with religion. No, I'm not. It's okay. I'm telling you the truth Amen. and you need to see it. Amen. One person told you he's going to be a dictator which against the laws of this land right. is wrong. Yes, yes. 
But they tell us to accept it. We've seen him in office. We've seen him for what he's done. Both sides are flawed. But then you have to take it to the step of who can I come alongside and convince about the glory of God? All right. My God. If you don't believe that government is a part of God's kingdom, just look at Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. All right. It tells us that the government is of God. Here's the key. Some governments will be good for God's purpose. Some will be bad for God's purpose. But you and I are supposed to be active in the ear, coming alongside, not only influencing the people, but also influencing government. All right. Our problem is this. We think that we can legislate God. Hmm. Oh, yeah. When you legislate God, you're not getting to the heart of the individual. They're doing it because the law says so. Yeah. It's something else when you come alongside and you just talk with them. You build a relationship with them and you show them the truth of who God is. Mm -hmm. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the yeah. Son and the Holy. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. If you legislate God, you then have to ask yourself, do they really have a relationship with him? What we're supposed to do is influence those laws that so people can see people care about them like God cares about. Hallelujah. And when you see incidents of people purposely hurting other people, it should flame us into action. Why? Because it flamed Jesus into action. Yes, did. Remember when he went into his, his father's temple uh -huh. and he had to flip over some tables? We just turn off the TV. I don't want to be a part of that. I won't vote. I won't come alongside those that need help. I won't evaluate these new laws they're trying to put in. I won't look at the people that they're trying to put in. But get your call for action. We're all called to the kingdom of God for action. We're not supposed to be sitting on our hands and letting all these events go on. The question is then, who are you really subject to? It's not God. It's ourselves. Because we're picking what councils, what ordinances of God that you and I are going to get involved in. To be godly, you got to present yourself as a godly person. But what if your character, the things you do, don't represent a godly character? Are you supposed to support that individual? What if someone was in your family raising hell? Would you let them come to you and raise hell? Well, some of your responses tell me that you got some of that old self still present inside of you. But we're meant to be peacemakers. And how can you be peaceful when the individual you're trying to make peace with wants to do harmful things? That's right. Like a Project 2025. I shouldn't have to tell you about his character. You should already know about it. I shouldn't have to tell you about her character. You should already know about it. But saints, believers are not meant to sit on the sideline. Amen. Everything we're called to do is to serve others. Amen. In your homes, with your children, with your spouses, with your neighbors, on your job, and even in your political affiliation. Those things that take up your time. How many of you have a ball inside of here? And if you don't, I'm going to tell you something. You need to be sharing the gospel because this passage tells us it's not optional. It actually shows that you have a relationship with God. All right. 
You can't tell me, well, Pastor, I don't have time. You got time to be on your phone, don't you? <laughs> and I can go through your contacts, and I guarantee you I can find some people that don't know the Lord. So if you can't get around in your car, you can definitely get around on your phone. All right. God tells us that there's a particular way that you and I need to function. Amen. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 39. We are meant to love God. First law. Second law. Treat your neighbors as yourself. You got to love God, love your neighbor. But we're so much in love of ourselves that we don't see those two commandments and we definitely don't do the second. We'll holler out God's name at a drop of a hat. That song come on, well, praise God. Uh -huh. That movie come on, praise God. You see your neighbor? I don't like that. <laughs> The what of what we do is we're supposed to go and make disciples. Yeah. It's not optional. We have to go, come on y'all, and make disciples. That's right. And it didn't say of the black nation. It didn't say of the white nation. It didn't say of the Mexican. It doesn't say of all the nations. Yeah. That's why I said if you're of God, you cannot look at color. You can't be scared of culture. you got to be willing to get out of your comfort zone and share the gospel no matter who it is. All right. We done tore up 19. Now let's look quickly at 20. Because 20 tells us the how. Actually, it starts back in 19, but it was such a nice break, I just took it right for what it is. So, if you really understand what God is telling us to do, he tells us in 20 the how we are to do it. All right. Look at that first word, teaching. Now, in any other subject, you can learn about it from different ways. Any other subject. But this teaching is unique, mm -hmm. and you have to go to a special book oh, in order to find out what you're supposed to be teaching. See, when you go to make the, the disciples, God says you need to teach them, but you don't teach them in every way. Right. You teach them in my way. Yeah. See, make tells you there's a specific way we need to do it. Okay. Make how? You teach them to follow all that I have commanded. Yes. Mm. Now some of us when we go share the word or we're quoting scripture we'll dull out certain words that make us accountable to what we're sharing. Uh, to my feminists in the room you'll even change the names or the wording of the vows. I'm not going to obey nobody. <laughs> to the men, we get a mindset that women are inferior to us. Oh, God. But when God created man and woman, they were equal. That's right. Our roles in his plans are different. Uh -huh. But our designs, we are equal. That's right. Because he fashioned one out of the first one. So if there's something wrong with her, there's something wrong with us. Amen. And when he fashioned us, he fashioned men a certain way, and he fashioned women a certain way. It doesn't mean that one is lesser other than the order of the roles that God says in his word. It's just in your working of the role, and we won't even accept that. We come into God's word and we dominate his word and change it to mean what makes it comfortable. There are churches now. That's why I told you. Watch out for the pulpit that's teaching you. Because 
if they don't represent the Bible for what it is, they can't teach you what the Bible is because they're already letting you know there's a problem in their theology. And I'm leaving that right there. But to gain the understanding that you and I need, we need God to open the understanding for us, right? Amen. And, and Luke really talks about this in Luke chapter 22, I mean 24, verses 44 and 45. And it says, now he said to them, these words are my words, which I spoke to you while I was still with you, Christ, that all things are written about me in the law of Moses and of the prophets and of the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to, the un to understand the scriptures. Who in here tried to read the Bible before you had a relationship with God? How many of you had no idea what you were reading? But when you got that relationship with God and he started opening up his words to you, who now understands the Bible? And I'm not saying I understand every little nuance of it. I think that's impossible for man because we're dealing with an infinite God. But he's very clear on things that we need to do in order to live this spiritual life here and now. All right. I want to end this message this way because this is the way that God decided to, to end the message for you and I. When you look at it, it says the end of the age. All right. And we can take that to mean a lot of things. But let's look at it in the context in which it's being shared with us. What this is, is a promise. It's a promise of God that all that are in him, he's going to be with them until the end of this age. All right. Woo. End of the age is a promise. I'm not getting enough shouting here. On, the end of the age is a promise that God gives to every believer that he's going to be with you until this comes to an end. All right. Because when, they, when we go there, we're there forever. Yeah. Right now, we're having to deal with being broken, being pressed upon, oh. just trying to deal with life. All right. And God says, the climax of our relationship yeah. is going to be when I end this age, when I'm going to promise to be with you, and I take you to the... Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And here's the beauty of our passage today. We have been given that power to share with all those who don't know about it. About having that promise of love until we go to be with the Father. Mm -hmm. You and I have talked about joy and what joy really means. Joy doesn't mean happiness. Right. Happiness will come and go. Mm -hmm. Joy means no matter your situation, you can turn to God and have solace in that to All get right. you through. All right. That's joy. Yeah. Because no matter what this world puts on us, God has allowed it, and it's for our development in him, and we just have to ask him, God, what do you want me to learn? And take away, God, why me? God, where are you taking me? God, I can't see my way out. God, I know this is all for your glory. God, I'm tired. I'm wore down, and I can't take the next step. See, one person is dealing with happiness and the other one is dealing with joy. Yes. They're in the same situation. They just have a different perspective of the situation that they're in. My God. So saints, why are we sitting down on God instead of sharing that joy with everyone? All right. All the question really comes down to this. Do you believe? 
See, no matter what you do in this world, ultimately, just you will stand before God to give an account of what you did and did not do. That's right. And you can't give him excuses. Mm. Well, I thought I saw a, a bubble in my tire. <laughs> and I saw that my kid then was standing next to the tire blowing bubbles. God, I couldn't make it because my favorite show was on. <laughs> yes, I know those people needed me. But God, I needed to see what happened and who shot JR. <laughs> How can someone get on you about the quality of life of a person being born when they don't honor the life of those who are already living that are here? How can you hide in the comfort of saying that you hate abortion, but then you won't support the life issues that people are really going through? But when you have a relationship with God, you have to bear out the fruits of his spirit. And if you don't see that in the individual, you cannot support them. As a matter of fact, if these characteristics are not in you, you can't even support you. My God. It's about our walk with God and the power and the authority that he's given us. But we have to understand, we have to do it in him. When we baptize him, who are we baptizing him in? I didn't hear not one of you say your name. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't say my name. Uh -huh. Because then it's not holy. See, when you, when you make them disciples in the holiness of God, they are now beneficial to the kingdom. All right. And if you make them in the name of you or your pastor or that board, or that person that gives the most in the church. Oh God. We have to honor God. You and I are called here for one purpose, and that's to honor God in all his counsel. Yeah. So we can't go, we can't make, we can't teach if it's not centered in God. All right. Because if you're doing any of those in any other name, you just created another being for Satan. Yeah. Let us remember that where we are, God will always allow us to repent, ask for forgiveness, and grow in him. 1 John 1 and 9. Whatever sin you're doing right now, it can be overtaken by the grace of God. Thank you. Romans chapter 5 at the end, and it goes into the beginning of 6. God is telling us there's nothing you can do except for blaspheming the Holy Spirit that he will not forgive you of. Amen. Pastor, I did some hurtful things. God already knows. He just wants you to repent and come to him. Mm. Be the priestly tribe that he called us to be. All right. And honor him in all that we think, say, and do. Amen. 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 Amen.